Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Food. Food, food, food. Hi, guys. Uh, Marco Pierre White for Beef Stroganoff. From Nor Beef Stockpot. All right, go. When I was a boy many years ago, one of the most common dishes on menus, and one of the most popular with the customers, was a beef stroganoff. It should take between five to 10 minutes, depending on the size of your meat, and secondly, the quantities that you're making. Sorry. What is it? Sorry. Butter, onions, paprika, butter mushrooms, tomato puree, olive oil, fillet of beef, sour cream, nor beef stock pot, okay, lemon juice, and, the and parsley. A little butter. So in this pan, I'll make my sauce, and this, I'll cook my beef. In with the onions, little paprika. When you cook paprika, you have to be very careful because a lot of people, what they tend to do is season their beef with the paprika, and when they fry their beef, they tend to burn it. Cook it very gently with your onions. You get a much better result. We take our mushrooms. As you can see, the mushrooms Love that mushrooms. I'm using are very small and very white. Very important. If you go for large brown mushrooms, it tends to stain your sauce. In the pan with the onions and the paprika, in with the beef. The best cut of meat. So I love like uh, listening to anyone who knows a lot about a certain thing, like cooking, for example, is that they know s they're on such another level that a lot of the things that like I worry about, like he he he's he's thinking of the color of the mushroom making the the sauce look different he he's got the taste down and it's stuff like that that is just it's neat and with the beef the best cut of meat to use in my opinion is fillet steak every time but if you can't get a fillet then use rum or use sirloin just sweat down your mushrooms with the onions and the paprika and you can see that the mushrooms are starting to be stained by the paprika which gives it that very attractive color Add the tomato puree. So you can see that I don't shake the pan, I move the meat. By shaking the pan, you lose heat. And you know, this way, you can see the caramelization in your meat. Lots of people cut it into strips, so therefore you don't get that caramelization. I like a big chunk of my fillet steak, so I get that nice caramelization, but my meat's pink inside. Then we add our sour cream into the colander with our meat. Two things, one, releases the fat which has been cooked in, and secondly, it starts to rest the meat. Allow the juices to drip out. Interesting. And add one nor beef stock pot. The stock pot, as you can see, is used as a seasoning. I always wondered, uh, I was like, what? I'm so surprised these don't get copyrighted. These don't get copyrighted. And uh, one of you guys, a few, a few Marco Pierre White videos back said, it's cause like the stock pot um, it, it is like sponsoring the videos, so they're not going to copyright it. It, it. it makes sense. It also gives it great body. Good it gives you that beefiness which you want. And then we finish with a little lemon. As you can see, my meat's rested. It's still hot. Add your beef. And there you have it. So it's, beef just, the, it's just the sour cream that makes it so... Finish. I would recommend that you serve it with rice, which is traditional and classical, or with ribbons and pasta. And to finish, a little parsley. And there's our beef stock enough. And what the Nor Beef Stock Pot does is gives it that real depth of flavor. It gives it real body, which makes a massive difference. The whole m meat of this, no, the whole base of the sauce was the sour cream. That's interesting. Let's do another. Uh, chicken chasseur. One of the great classics of French cuisine, chicken chasseur, otherwise known as hunter-style chicken, in 15 to 20 minutes. Very simple. Chicken breast, shallots, chopped parsley, chopped tarragon, tomatoes, mushrooms, tomato juice with a little bit of gravy browning just for the color. Not necessary, but it just gives it that richness. Butter, then a bit of brandy, a little white wine, Butter. and of course, that, that video, butter. It's butter. Butter. <laughs> chicken stock pot. Take our chicken and we flour it. 
No need to season, the stock pot will do that for you. You may ask why I'm flowering it. One, it gives it that nice golden brown colour, and secondly, just that little bit of flour assists with the thickening of the sauce. You can remove the skin if you wish, but I'll be very honest, I kind of like cooked skin. I place my chicken skin side down. Don't want it too hot, otherwise it'll scorch the flour straight away. By cooking it slowly, one, I get the caramelization assisted with the flour, but secondly, I'm rendering the fat within the skin, which then makes the skin palatable. Very few people these days flour their chicken. When I was a boy, when I started many years ago, chicken breasts were always floured before they were pan fried. And chicken chasseau was always a fricassee, it was cooked in a pan and the sauce made with it. But you can see how golden the chicken is becoming now. This is what the flour does. Take our finely chopped shallots, make some room for them, and so they go underneath. If I sprinkled them on, some of them wouldn't be cooked, they'd be raw. By pushing them chicken to the side, dropping them in the middle, and allowing them to seep underneath. They're so fine, they take seconds. Now, the brandy again, when you deglaze anything with brandy, or alcohol, always around the edge of the pan. Because if you splash it over the chicken, the raw alcohol is staying on top of the chicken. Around the edge of the pan, it runs underneath. As you can see, I've turned it over, so therefore, by the time my chicken's cooked, it's cooked evenly on both sides. A little white wine. Again, around the outside, so there's no raw alcohol on the chicken. Tasting the wine, because I want the acidity to remove, so the natural sweetness and flavor of the wine comes through. So you can see our shallots, chicken juices, white wine and brandy have all reduced down now into a constraint, it's quite syrupy. So what I'm going to add now is my chicken stock pot, just on the edge. And then I'm going to add my tomato juice. I'm just slowly bringing my sauce to the boil. Tomato juice? So the stock pot has now dissolved into the liquid. You can see the richness. Very quick sauce, very easy. In the other pan... Dang, that garlic. looks like a really good barbecue chicken, but it's not barbecue You can sauce. see the richness. Very quick sauce, very easy. Oh, if that was barbecue chicken, I'm not, I'm not, I'm sure it's delicious anyway. Ooh. Easy. In the other pan, we'll prepare our garnish. In with our mushrooms. In with the parsley. In with your tomatoes. Diced tomatoes with the skin removed. Again, it's about taking out the water out of the mushrooms to intensify the flavor. And then a generous amount of tarragon in with the chicken. Your tarragon, parsley, uh, all the green things, I always mix up. Garnish over. I forget. But... Just to finish with a sprinkling of parsley. And there we have it, chicken chasse in 15 to 20 minutes. Very simple, foolproof. With the stock pot. All right, cool video. I want to do some of the, uh, what's that channel? Um, it's like, what? peasants used to eat or something like that guys i'm actually going to separate these into two videos all right i'm going to do the uh uh this one i did and the um what medieval peasants ate i think or, or the rich medieval people anyways i'm separating it into two videos uh see you guys then bye guys